like we're recording. Hey, hey guys, Pete here. A little drive time. I'm in uh, South Carolina. Just left North Carolina, headed down to Florida. We had a meeting last night in one of our mastermind groups, and it was awesome. I think you want to pay attention to this. So we got an HVAC business owner in one part of the country who's selling systems in the mid-20,000. Then we had another business owner who is actually uh, in a major city up in Canada, and he's like, there's no way you could get that here. And then we have all the dealers that are popping in. You know, we got, what do we have, about seven members in there. And so there's this debate going back and forth as to, well, of course you can. And then then, then there's this, well, I don't want to rip people off. And uh, so the integrity thing comes into mind. And this is exactly, this is exactly what I've been talking about for the last, forever. That's what HVAC Greatness was built on. You know, how do you portray your book? your greatness so that you can get your worth and you're not competing over that same fighting over that same bone in your market and so when I created the program called the HVAC X Factor this is what the X Factor is okay so the guy that's getting top dollar in his market he's also the top company in his market okay there there's companies out there that are substantially cheaper than he is the customers, the customers hold them to a competitive price amongst themselves, but not this guy. Why? Because he's earned the right. He's done the he's done the work. So if you, if you want to build your X factor, in other words, that thing about that company, and people will just that they'll pay more money for it. They'll. They'll wait more time for it. They'll, they, they'll, they'll get on the list. It's not about the brand. Well, you, you know, the other company has this brand. Well, you, you have the same brand. Well, why, why is it not the same brand? It doesn't become about those type of things. Guys, it all starts with your mindset. That's where it begins. If you think you can't do it, you can't do it. If you think you can, of course you can't. But it does take doing the work, the incremental work in creating an identity in your market that is perceived as high end, that is different. As soon as you are in the same category with all the other heating and air conditioning contractors, then it just comes down to brand. Sorry. Then it just comes down to price. Okay, so you want how much for that two-stage cooling, 90% gas furnace, we communicating, you, you want how much? You know, the other company is $1,000 cheaper than you are, and it's the same thing. This is why you must understand blue ocean theory versus the red ocean not theory, strategy. The blue ocean strategy versus the red ocean. If you're in the red ocean fighting in the blood saturated water with all the sharks over the same customers, it gets competitive. Are you tired of that yet? That race to the bottom? You know, you may be the best thing since sliced bread, but they don't know that until you learn to communicate it non-verbally creating a unique power identity. Creating something that your customers desire. This goes beyond logic. This goes deep into emotion. People who want quality and they don't want problems and they want the best buy based on that pattern. Now you got a few things that you have to do. Let's take the guy who's in his market. He's top of his market. He goes into the houses themselves, <coughs> selling $25,000, $28,000 systems. Then he gets, goes over to this other market, 
He goes out and represents his company. Can he get those same numbers? No. No, because it's not sales. This is not your comfort advisor's skill set. It's you. It's your identity or lack thereof. If you really want to make money, to make the margins, to make the profits that allow you the lifestyle that you want, the freedom that you want, instead of having to run your all these hours, kill yourself all summer long, and save it up because you're going to go through it this winter when you don't have any work. When you get tired of that cycle, why not fix it? This is not a one-trick pony. This is not one thing that you do that will fix everything. That one thing that you will say when you're in the house is going to get you that sale. That new wrap that's just going to bring all this business in or that new new uh, SEO marketer that you hired is just going to fix your business. That's not the solution. And until you get this, you're going to st the struggles will continue. Your business life is going to continue to see, teach you the same lessons until you learn them. And most of you, some of you are different. Most of you never will learn it. You're going to continue to struggle. You're going to continue to be frustrated and overwhelmed and pulled in a hundred different directions. And how in the world can anybody do this when they're out here <coughs> doing all the stuff that, uh, that we have to do every day? How can we, how can I fix all this stuff? You have to start by fixing you. Let me tell you something. 99%, 90, at least 95%, it, it's getting better. 95% of you business owners out there, your mindset is all screwed up because we're all screwed up to, when we start this thing, right? I always talk about the lottery syndrome where you take this poor person who's never had any money in any in their life ever, they win the lottery and all of a sudden they're, they're set for life, two, three years later they're broke. Why? Because they don't think and act and behave like a wealthy person. If you go into business with an employee mindset and belief system and try to be a business owner, an entrepreneur, until you rewire and fix these things, you're not going to make it. It's not going to last. The struggles will continue. It's going to get hard. You can't sell at that level. You can't acquire, you can't attract those type of employees. You can't get those types of customers. It all starts with you. You've got to fix you. And so when we put this program together, I said, okay, I keep telling everybody, this is what you need to do. Oh, okay. I get it. And it, you've heard you've heard much of this stuff. You know most of it, but you're not going to do it. Why? Well, there's no time. Well, that won't work here. Well, you know, I was going to, but this, that, and the other. You are not running your business from a logical standpoint. You're running it from an emotional, reactive standpoint. That's the way we're wired. Can you shift and be in the logical state of mind all the time? I mean, in theory, maybe. It'd be hard. Most people will fail. So what do you do? You become a slave to your emotional mind? To the, to the way you're hardwired? Well, I want to do this. I want to stay in and do the commitment, but I just really, that inside of me saying, you know, let's just call it a day. Let's just go home. There's no time. We'll do that tomorrow. How do you, is it self-discipline? A little bit. Or is there more? So when we put this together, we said, okay, we need to rewire some of our upstairs belief systems, some of our habits, some of our behaviors, some of our disciplines. And guess what? When you do this, all of a sudden, you're, instead of your your impulse taking you in a destructive, non-productive path, it takes you into a productive 
self-improving path towards success. If you're out there, it don't matter where you're at. It don't matter where you are in your business right now. I guarantee you need this. We all need this. If, do you watch the self-improvement uh, type stuff that's out there, like on YouTube or the the uh, the mindset? You got to get up in the morning and do the inspiration. And those successful people have the same 24 hours a day that you do, but they don't sit in bed. They don't sleep in every morning. They get up. They get up at 5 a.m. They go do their workout. They do. You hear these things, right? And it's true. How do you transition into from that old lazy employee mindset, let's just do the minimum to make our money and get out of there, over to the entrepreneur mindset that is proactive and it's not reactive. That it, it searches out and finds clarity and perceives things from a fresh perspective, from an empowering perspective that your competition can't see. And the very thing that you say right now, that can't be done around here. Your competition says, that won't work here. Once you get that clarity, and there is clutter that has to be removed when you go through this, you'll see it's, a, it's beautiful. All of a sudden you see, well, of course you can do that here. And in the face of your competition that's telling you, you can't do this. You do it, and it works. And you had these conversations like we did last night. You can't do that. That won't work here. They would put you out. Of, you'd be on the six o'clock news, the eleven o'clock news. No, you wouldn't. Not if you have integrity. Not if you know what you're doing. Not if you're professional. <coughs> not if you're honest. Not, not if you're pricing uh, properly. The nine o'clock, the six o'clock news, the eleven o'clock news. They're not experts on how to price an HVAC business uh, service, how to repair or equipment replacement. Heck, most of us aren't. What are they going to do? Call and find out what the wholesale price of the equipment is, and, and and then they determine based on guesswork what it should cost to be installed. It's a joke. It's stupid. Listen, if you'll do the work, if you'll put in the energy, if you have the drive, if you have the desire, if you reverse engineer your business, which you have not done, you know, and you're watching this, that you probably came up with your company name with some clever personal initials or something means something to you and is clever to you and you like it and nobody else even knows what the heck it is. Why would you do that? I mean, if you're your, your if you're the customer of the business, of your own business, well, yeah, you'd like it. But your customers don't even know what that name means, many of you. Or your name is <coughs> so bland and so general, it just falls in with everybody else. Blankety blank, heaty and air. You're just easy to forget, hard to remember. If you want to stand out, be different. If you want to be considered a cut above your competition, then stop looking like your competition. Stop behaving like your competition. Stop marketing and advertising like your competition. $500 off, got a rebate. Money, money, money. You're going to attract money customers. Not everybody is all motivated. Money is important to all of us. But not everybody is looking for somebody to come in their home for the cheapest price, <coughs> which is no differently than they're looking for a heart surgeon to do their heart surgery for the cheapest price. Two different scenarios, I know. But this is your health. This is your life. You're not going to take the three get three estimates to get the cheapest bid on heart surgery and you you're and when you're talking about your home and the safety of your home and the investment of your home you're not going to go get three estimates and go with the cheapest bid if you are halfway informed if you are an experienced based customer who's been burned a time or two everybody starts off value based because the world trains us that way you go on amazon you can go Get this part or that part, it's the same part, it doesn't matter. Shipped to you, 
so it's, it just comes down to money. Not when somebody's coming into your house. Not when there's a technician, a professional technician that has to design, <coughs> that has to understand and, and check, and it takes this. It takes the experience, the knowledge, the insight, the, uh, the structure, the checklist. Pilots don't put their craft into the air until they go through the checklist, regardless of how much experience they have. They don't do it. It's too big of a risk. What about you, your structure? You have, maybe you're the business owner, you have one of the best skill sets. And you can go out there and fix anything. Then you hire somebody who says he's got 10 years experience and maybe halfway to you know, good, good, good technician can diagnose things, but is he checking what you check too? No, there's no way. You don't even you don't even approach it the same way most of the time. The very things that you can see clearly when you look at the system, he's not even noticing, and you don't realize that. When you start putting this stuff together, this takes work. It's not done overnight. But if you'll follow a process that leads you down that path, when you come out the other end, it is monumentally different. If you want to be the exception to your market, if you want to be the company that stands out, you've got to start in here. you got to find that identity. I've worked with people, I'll start taking them down that path and the just show me how to sell maintenance agreements. They don't know. They don't realize that they can go out there and copy all these other companies. And by the way, all of these training companies, these top-end training companies, they all came from the same sources of information that I went to and did the training, what, 30 years ago. People like Ron Smith that pioneered our industry. You know, Steve Howard that pioneered the sales industry, HVAC. Dr. Ron Collier on the financials, you know, big time, uh, Ron Smith, you know, he, he, with that modern air conditioning over there in, in Florida, became the model for the industry. And to this day, all of the software and everything supports that. Because remember, the more and more high tech this world gets, the more and more high touch people crave whether they consciously know it or not. They don't want to be your friend. They don't want to get to know you. They don't want to like you, but the moment they do, they don't want to let it go. They'll never let it go. You're their guy or gal. You're the one they call. You're the company. And when you, get, when you, you have this right, you'll go out on that call and they will love you and then when you send an employee out on that call, instead of them saying, well, you know, that employee's a nice guy, but do you mind coming back and working on my equipment? That's probably what you've been running into. Instead of getting that, your customer's reaction goes something like this. Wow, that person was really good. So you get that feedback. What a great, what a, what a great technician. Then you send another employee out who follows the same structure has, a, has his or her own personality, of course. Follows the, chain che the same checklist. And that customer's going, wow, it wasn't just that one technician. It's the company. There you go. There's a reason these technicians will leave a company and take half the business with them. Because the loyalty is to the person and not to the organization. Shoot, I just passed an ambulance. <laughs> anyway. I'm getting uh, long-winded, got a little drive time. I gotta go all the way down to Florida and I've got about a 10 hour drive left. I'll upload this at some point. You guys be safe out there. Love you guys. Reach out, let's talk about this. The struggle will continue. Life is gonna keep teaching you these lessons till you learn them, adjust. But once you get it, once you get it dialed in, it's worth it. And you'll say to yourself, my God, why did I not do this you know, five years ago, ten years ago? Be Ramsey, your HJC, great. You guys take care.